Hey, I'm here to show you the monomodulator, which is a step sequencer, monophonic step sequencer <clears throat> made for the lemur. And it has a, a accompanying max patch to go with it to make it communicate with Live 7 or any version of Live, probably. Uh, <clears throat> and the sequencer has room for 16 different patterns. Each pattern can be up to uh, 64 steps in length. Um, each pattern comes with eight modulation sequencers uh, that I'm thinking that you can hook to macros or any automatable par parameter in live, really. And so let me just show you what it's about. The interface consists, consists of um, two pages on the lemur. This one is the, like the setup thing and then we have the whole sequencing part of it. So there's a slider for what speed you want your um, sequence to run in, 16s, 8s, whatever. Um, and then we have uh, different keys to assign the modulation param parameters to any parameter in line. Um, here are knobs just to um, set the initial values for every uh, automatable par parameter or every automatable macro there is. And then finally just a uh, selector to choose what channel you want your automation to run on and what your um, base control change number will be. Page number two. We have 16 pattern selectors. We have the modulation sequencer. We have indicators, what step we're on, and what bar we're on really, first, second, third, and fourth. Um, we have the, the monophonic sequencer, the note sequencer. Um, we have a note length selector. We have some stuff just to clear our sequencer. Um, we have a selector to choose what beat we want to work on. Now that's empty, that's empty, that's empty. But there's something on the first 16. And then what length we want the pattern to be. Just the first bar, so the first 16 steps. Then we have a macro selector. Uh, so like select the first macro sequence like that. Second, third, fourth. And if you want to go with the initial macro value, the one you put select it right here. So you have something to start with, just press this for whatever macro you're, on, macro you're on and boom, there you go to, in this case, an open filter. And you have a copy function, just select, if you want to copy the notes, select and hold, and then whatever pattern you want to paste it to. Yeah, that's it. Then we have the max patch itself. It's a rather easy setup to do, but you need to know some basic stuff about uh, routing MIDI um, via virtual MIDI driver. I'm using just the, the internal IAC from, from Mac OS X. Um, and you need to understand some things about syncing live to external instruments. Um, and you need, of course, know how to set up your lemur. But knowing all that, this is quite easy. Um, just set up what um, what virtual MIDI port you want to send your note data to live on. And in my case, I'm just using what I call IAC plain MIDI. And and then you want to set up what what port the at max MSP patch should receive sync, uh, like MIDI sync from live. And I'm just calling mine IAC Live Sync and this of course has to be set up in live as well. And then you have um, what media port you want to use for the remote mapping in live. <clears throat> I'm using a port called IAC Live Remote uh, which of course has to be set up in, in live as well. And my IP address of the lemur and my port address of the lemur.
in live make sure that um, you have the input from for um, for the notes to receive like a like the track is on um, for the virtual media port mine called plain MIDI. Be sure to make um, the remote port uh, input to on so it receives like the the macro modulations from the max patch uh, so that should be set to remote and then make sure that uh, your sync port is set to sync out from live so live is the master here actually and um, you should not uh, enable uh, the output of the remote port because that will cause a media feedback and um, so no need for that um, that's it I guess